Hey everybody, my name is Rose, and today I'm going to be talking to you all about iridescence. So what exactly is iridescence? Iridescence is basically when an object looks like it's a different color depending on what angle you look at it from. The first example of this that we're going to talk about today is peacock feathers. You can see here on this eye of the peacock feather how it really shifts between this dark purpley blue and this really pretty bright greeny blue. And you can also see on the ends of this feather here where it almost looks brown when it's out of the light, but when it does really catch the light, it almost glows green. Another really good example of iridescence in nature is the blue morpho butterfly. Here you can see just how gorgeous and vibrant blue this blue morpho is. And in this little video clip here, you can really see how that color shifts when it catches the light. Another example is the hummingbird. Hummingbirds like this one have a bright red throat, and you can see how it looks pretty dull at first, but it really glows bright red when it catches the light right. And our last example that we're going to talk about right now is the magpie. Magpie tail is probably the subtlest example of iridescence we've looked at yet, but you can still see how it looks pretty solid black until it catches the light, and then you can see this blue start to appear, and even some pink and yellow near the end of the tail there. Now let's talk a little bit about how iridescence works. Iridescence isn't technically a color. Usually when you have a color, it's made by a pigment, which is like a dye, like when you tie-dye a t-shirt. But you can't dye a shirt iridescent, that's not how it works. Iridescence is caused by structural differences in the object. So what about these structures actually causes iridescence? Well, it has to do with how the colors of light get separated out from one another. When you see white light from a lamp or from the sun, actually, it has all of the colors in it. And when they mix together, your brain interprets them as white instead of each individual color. When you look at an item and see a color, say blue, what you're actually seeing is all of this white light with every single color in it hitting that object and all of the colors getting absorbed into it except for blue, which bounces off and that's what goes into your eye and gets processed into the color blue in your brain. With iridescence, the structure of the object itself changes the way that the light bounces off of it. Instead of just one color bouncing off and into your eye, a bunch of different colors bounce off, and they bounce off in all different directions. So that's why you see different colors when you look at an iridescent object from a different angle. Now, there's a couple kinds of structures that can cause iridescence that we're going to talk about today. The first one of these is a really thin film over another object. A really great example of this is bubbles. Bubbles are actually made up of two really thin layers of bubble solution or soap on either side of another thin layer of water. When light hits a bubble, some of it bounces off the outside of the first layer of bubble solution, some of it bounces off the water, and some of it bounces off the bottom layer of bubble solution. So that's why when you look at bubbles from different angles, you see a whole rainbow of colors in them. It's super easy to see this at home, even if you don't have bubble solution on hand. The next time you wash your hands, when the soap is getting all nice and frothy, you can look down and move your hands around and see how the light in the bubbles shifts. You can even rub your hands together to make one bigger layer of bubble solution that's even more easy to see. The second kind of structure that causes iridescence is what causes iridescence in bird feathers and butterfly wings. Butterfly wings and bird feathers are actually covered in teeny teeny tiny little ridges and bumps. They're so small you can't see them with just your eyes, and even some microscopes aren't strong enough to look at them. The light bounces off all of these little different ridges and bumps in different directions, and that's why you see different colors from different angles, just like with the bubbles. So since we've been talking so much about bird feathers and butterfly wings so far today, what we're going to be making for our activity is iridescent bird feathers and butterflies. So the materials you're going to want for our activity today are a paper cutout either in the shape of a bird feather or a butterfly, or if you want to be creative and do another iridescent animal or object we've talked about today, that's fine too. I do recommend using black cardstock like what we have here just because the iridescence does show up best on dark colors, but you can use any paper as long as it's thick enough to withstand being dipped in water and doesn't have any plasticky or shiny coatings on it. 
We do also have a bunch of extra pre-cut butterflies and bird feathers in this black cardstock, as well as some extra pipe cleaners and clothespins. So if you really can't get materials or can't find an alternative, please just email us at the email below and we will be happy to send you some in the mail. You'll also want some clear nail polish. You can use just any brand you could find anywhere at the drugstore online. Unfortunately, some more natural brands don't work quite as well, but you only need one drop of it, and as long as you stick with just that one drop, you are not going to really get that much on your fingers or get that many fumes if you're worried about that. You'll also need a container just a little bit bigger than your paper cutout with around one inch of water in it. Last but not least, you'll want a clothespin or a paper clip, and if you are specifically making a butterfly, you'll want a pipe cleaner to make your antenna for it. If you don't have a pipe cleaner, you can also use an unbent paper clip or make an antenna-shaped cutout out of paper. Once you have all of your materials gathered and your container is full of water, the first thing you're going to want to do is take your nail polish and you're going to want to use the little brush to drop just one single little drop of nail polish into the water. There you go, and you want to wait till it spreads out. You can see that that just happened right there. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to take your paper cutout, and you're just going to drop it flat right on the top of the water there. And then you'll push it down, Wiggle it around a little bit just to make sure that all of that nail polish sort of wraps around the edges of the paper and sticks to it well. And then you can pull your thing out of the water. And as you can see, we have a beautiful iridescent butterfly. And it'll just get even brighter as it dries. I'm just going to rub it down a little bit just to make sure it's sticking well. And then I'm going to grab my clothespin and clip it onto that butterfly just so we have something to hold on to while it's drying. So while your project is drying, if you made a butterfly, what you're gonna to wanna to do is take your pipe cleaner and roll up the ends to make the little balls on the end of the antenna. And then you're just gonna to wanna to fold it in half just so it looks like two antenna instead of just one. Next, you're going to take your now dried butterfly and you're going to clip that on with the clothespin to hold them in place and make the head of the butterfly. Now that we've finished our activity, I want us to take a minute to think about what is making our little paper butterflies and bird feathers iridescent. Remember, we talked about two different types of structures that cause iridescence earlier. One that's a really thin layer of something clear, and one that is a bunch of little tiny, tiny ridges and bumps. Which one do you think is happening? Take a minute to pause the video and think or talk it over. If you said it's the kind of iridescence with really thin layers, you're right. Even though bird feathers and butterfly wings in real life have lots of little ridges and bumps that make them iridescent, in our activity it's actually because of the really thin layer of nail polish. When you put a drop of nail polish on the water and it spreads out, it makes a really, really thin clear layer that then gets transferred onto the paper. So when you hold your paper up to the light, the light bounces off either the top of the nail polish or the bottom of the nail polish, and that's what makes it look all shiny and rainbowy and iridescent. Now, we've been talking a lot so far about blue morphos and peacocks as examples of iridescence, but we don't really see those in Colorado except at zoos. And even though we do have magpies and hummingbirds here in Colorado, they can be really hard to see the iridescence on since usually you're looking at them from a distance and they can move really fast. So what are some other examples of iridescence that we might see in our daily life here in Colorado? A really great example of naturally occurring iridescence that we see here in Colorado is Japanese beetles. Through the months of July and August, and even sometimes into early September, Japanese beetles are everywhere, though they especially like rose bushes and grape leaves. As you can see in this video clip here, Japanese beetles really shift from red to green on their heads and on this little stripe down their back. And the sides of their shell, even though they don't shift colors quite as much, still go from looking dull to practically glowing when they catch the light. Unfortunately, Japanese beetles are an invasive species to Colorado, which means that they don't originally live here. And they can actually cause a lot of damage to plants and animals that do live here naturally. So the best thing to do if you see them in your own yard is to get rid of them by shaking them off the plant and into a bucket of soapy water. 
Another really great example of iridescence is coffee. So if there's an adult who drinks coffee in your household, take a look at the bubbles that form on the top of the coffee grounds while their coffee is brewing and see if you can spot all the little iridescent rainbows in there. You might also have seen iridescence in puddles in the road after a rainstorm. When oil comes out of cars, sometimes it will form a film on the top of the water after a rainstorm, and that thin layer will act the same way as bubbles and bounce all the different colors off so you can see a rainbow in it. Another example of iridescence that you can see in your everyday life is actually inside the eye of your cat or dog. A lot of animals that need to be able to see well after dark, like cats or dogs, have a structure in their eye called a tapetum lucidum that's actually iridescent. Basically how the tapetum lucidum works is it sits behind the retina, which is the part of the eye that detects light and changes it into a signal that can be sent to the brain. In animals that have a tapetum lucidum, what happens is the light goes into the eye, passes through the retina just like it would in any other animal's eye, but then it bounces off the tapetum lucidum and goes back through the retina a second time. This makes it so they can get a lot more information from a lot less light since it passes through their retina twice. This is why when the light catches your pet's eye just right, or when you take a photo of them after dark with a flash on, it makes their eyes almost look like they're glowing, just like in this photo of my cat here. Now, we've already talked a lot about what iridescence is, why it works, and where we might see it in our lives. But why does it exist? What benefit do animals get from being iridescent? In a lot of animals that are iridescent, including the peacock, the hummingbird, and the blue morpho, only the males are iridescent, while the females are mostly or all brown. Since the males and females are different colors from each other, it helps them pick each other out, and a nice vibrant color on the male shows that he's healthy and will make a good partner for the female. Iridescence can also be used by animals to avoid predators. The blue morpho is a really good example of this. Because the tops of its wings are bright, flashy blue, and the bottoms of its wings are brown, when it flies through the forest, the brown blends in while its wings are closed, and the blue reflects the sunlight from above when its wings are open. So when a predator sees it, they just see a repeated flash of blue that keeps vanishing. So it makes it confusing for the predator, and it also makes it really hard for them to keep track of where this butterfly is going. There are even more examples of iridescence in the world than I talked about in this video. So as you go forward with your life, I want you to keep your eyes out for more examples of iridescence. I bet you'll see a lot more of them than you're expecting. Thank you so much for watching our video today, and we will see you all next time. Bye!